Alright guys, so the very last video I did uh, just a couple days ago was overcoming your fear of snakes. And today I want to talk about the complete polar opposite. And I want to talk about the addiction to snakes. <laughs> and let me tell you, there's a lot of people addicted to snakes. And uh, if you haven't been to a reptile show, especially if you haven't been to the NARBC in Tinley Park or one of the other places, I would highly recommend going. I mean, there is a whole <laughs> subculture of people, and they are just whipped up in a frenzy, addicted to snakes. And uh, in this video, I'd like to cover a few of the reasons that <laughs> some of those people are just crazy over snakes. Okay, so I think the first reason uh, that, that snakes are really attractive as a pet is there are so many different kinds. Uh, there's so many different sizes and colors and shapes and patterns. There's snakes that live in the desert, snakes that live in the jungle. Uh, there's even snakes that live in the ocean underwater. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And I'm not sure how popular those underwater snakes are as pets. I haven't actually seen one at the show. <laughs> but let me tell you, there's snakes of all sizes and colors. And, uh, and you can get uh, anything from a really tiny snake. Let me show you this. I have a, let me pull down this Arizona mountain, uh, uh, it's a the desert phase California king snake, and you can get them all the way from something as tiny as this, he's <laughs> hiding under the paper towel, but this guy, he is a really neat snake, and I haven't, I haven't hardly pulled him out at all, and, oh, let me get a handle on him, <laughs> but he is, uh, I mean, if you can, you can just see the beauty and the colors, I mean, just a simple black and white snake with a, it's just really, really striking. And this guy's kind of still a juvenile, I'd say. I got him when he was really, really small. And, and I'm growing him up. He's about halfway to full size. He is a beautiful, really curious, a really neat snake. And uh, I'd say you could get, uh, this is probably one of the smaller ones. Actually, Something even smaller would be my Arizona Mountain King Snake. So this is my Arizona Mountain King Snake. I'd say this is probably one of the smallest snakes that I've seen. Um, you can actually get snakes that are a little bit smaller, but um, I would find I would imagine that anything smaller than this would be maybe more of a challenge to feed. This guy eats little pinky mice, <laughs> which is about the smallest I really want to go with a snake. But he's got some really beautiful colors. And uh, you can actually find him out in uh, the mountains of Arizona. <laughs> Since he's an Arizona mountain king snake. So that's pretty much right in my backwoods. These are uh, right, from the, <laughs> right from the backyard pretty much. So I got a, those are a couple snakes for kind of the small size. If you're looking for something small. But if you're looking for something big, I have something big for you too. <laughs> Take a look at this beast of a snake. So this is a this is a reticulated python, and reticulated pythons are the biggest snakes in the world. And this is uh, this is Lucy. She's about 50 pounds, and <laughs> and believe it or not, she is 50% dwarf. So a regular reticulated python would actually be probably at this age would be twice this size and would not fit in this tub. <laughs> In a, in a, a full mainland reticulated python, they get about 300 pounds, and uh, I would say it's a little too much snake for one person to handle. You know, if I had a couple people and maybe a shop, and I was set up properly for a full mainland retic, I'd probably get something like that. But that's kind of uh, the size extreme from going from a really small snake, that the small ones that never really get bigger than that, to something that just grows into a monster. And I think that's one of the reasons that snakes are really popular. You can get any size that you're comfortable with. Okay, so I think the size difference really made snakes really popular, but the other thing that really makes them popular is the colors and patterns. And I have some with some really wild colors and patterns. So take a look at this one. This is my, uh, my pastel desert ghost in feeding mode wants to <laughs> thinks my hand is a rat, but take a look at how beautiful this snake is. I mean, you just 
you just start looking at the colors and patterns and I could go I could go right down I could go right down the, the tubs here and just start pulling them out there's my pinstripe pied and my bumblebee <laughs> and my clown and you just take a look at all the colors and patterns of all the snakes and it's just it'll just I mean it's just almost endless <laughs> and and the num the variations and the combinations you can make with all these snakes is just pretty amazing and I mean that's that's only a few if we just if we just start pulling tubs you know we have a lesser pie that's an all white spider pie with uh, just a little color on the head we have the scaleless head who's hiding under there <laughs> of my bamboo and uh, my coral glow up here he's pretty cool and it, <laughs> my lesser clown I could just keep pulling him out and <laughs> it's just so many colors and patterns and I mean whatever you like whatever is attractive to you <laughs> you could definitely uh, find the color and pattern that's attractive to you and uh, personally, I'm not sure I really have a favorite. I think the bamboo is one of my favorites. He's a really, really beautiful snake. He's kind of going into shed a little bit. But um, these are, you don't see him very often. And he's a really, really stunning snake. I think the bamboo probably is my favorite. And as far as colors and patterns, and I'd say the albino pie down here. This guy is a beauty. He is really, really nice. And this is a, whoa, this is a double recessive. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of hard to hit on this one unless you start with albino pines. But you could just keep going on and on and on. Oh, this fire pied. I could just keep pulling them and show them to you. <laughs> Here's a pied with a little bit of fire that uh, <laughs> kind of lightens the pied a little bit. And he's a beautiful snake. Gorgeous. So I think one of the popularities for snakes, uh, to, to, for people addict, really addicted to snakes, <laughs> is the colors and patterns. And you're always going to the show, looking at the cases, and you, you know people are just looking at each and every snake, and, and you know which one should I add to my collection, and <laughs> it's, it's definitely addictive. <laughs> so the other thing that I think really adds to snakes being addictive is... Uh, it's it's more of an investment uh, for for a lot of snakes, so especially for ball pythons, I would say, and uh, I think ball pythons are the number one most popular snake because uh, the colors and patterns. There's so many. There's like over 200 base colors, and when you start mixing all the different combinations, there's literally millions of combinations that I mean, you could produce stuff your whole life and never produce. Uh, stuff that anyone else is producing <laughs> because there's just there's just so much stuff out there and uh, uh, the, and, and, and the investment value uh, with those snakes so as a matter of fact so, so one of my good friends we, we're kind of on the same level with about the same number of breeders and the same number of hatchlings and I produced uh, close to a hundred I'd say and he's about in the mid 80 range and he called me up the other day and said you know I'm down on my luck uh, my, my kids are having problems and they need, uh, we have some, uh, medical bills <laughs> that we can't pay. And, uh, you know, he's, he's also got some, uh, ed, you know, bills for college and, and a lot of unexpected bills. And, uh, and then he kind of shows me his collection of snakes and says, Hey, you interested in any of these? And I'm like, well, not really because I'm not into those projects. I'm kind of focused on different things. And we're like completely on different uh, in different projects. I don't think there's almost there's almost nothing uh, that we have in common as far as maybe except the pides and the clowns. But uh, but he came up to me and said, "Yeah, I posted my snakes on the internet for sale on Friday, and by Monday I had fifteen thousand dollars in the bank." <laughs> and he came back and he said, "You know, without those snakes." I don't know how I'd make it. I don't know how I'd survive. <laughs> so it's almost it's almost uh, where where some people um, they're at a point in their life where they need snakes. <laughs> they depend on the money coming from the snakes 
to actually make ends meet, especially when you're talking about, you know, medical bills and college bills, you know, the big ones, you know, buying vehicles and stuff like that, that are kind of unexpected. And, and I think that's kind of the big craze, uh, why people are really, it's, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like instead of going to the stock market and then picking, well, I want to invest in this company, you're going to the reptile show and you actually have something tangible in your hand <laughs> that has a higher rate of return and you can spend as little or as much as you want and it's almost like uh, an investment you can keep right at home and, uh, it, and a lot of times it, it pays off more than any other investment and I think that's one of the reasons that uh, people really get addicted, especially to ball pythons. So another reason I think snakes make really good pets and people get really addicted is that they're really low maintenance. And for example, if you compare them to your dog, feeding and watering twice a day, <laughs> forget about that with a snake, it's once a week at best. And uh, some snakes will go months without eating. As a matter of fact, uh, the ancient civilization called them gods because <laughs> you can literally take a snake, put it in a box, put it under your bed for a whole month, pull it out, and it'll still be alive and kicking. It'll be perfectly fine. And try that with any other animal, and it won't survive, let me tell you. So snakes, I mean, they, they take some work, especially on a level that I'm at. You know, I say they're low maintenance, and, and people have commented, well... It takes some work, yes, but compared to any other animal, they are extremely low maintenance and extremely hardy. And as a matter of fact, ball pythons will live like 30 years. And people say, I want to get a snake because I'm tired of my dogs dying every 10 years <laughs> of old age. You know, and, and snakes, you know, it's, they, they have a really long lifetime and they're really low maintenance. And I think it, that's why people really like them as pets. So I'll leave you with one more thing that people go crazy over snakes uh, as far as being addicted to the hobby. And I would say it is the ball python community and the internet. <laughs> By far, I think. So there's a website out there called uh, ballpythons.net and People are on there like 24-7. I used to be on there non-stop posting stuff all the time, all the time. And it's actually before I kind of jumped over onto YouTube, I was on there a lot. <laughs> all my free time was spent over there. And yeah, you know, people just talk about every topic under the sun. And if you look in the history of all the, all the threads, there's, you know, everything you could possibly ever want to know about snakes and reptiles and it's really cool. And another one is Morph Market. You get on there and there's like almost 70,000 snakes for sale. And people just, you know, it's it's almost like you're watching the stock market looking at Morph Market. And you're just looking at, you know, what's out there, the new stuff coming out and the prices and how they change. And I mean, it's totally, totally addictive. And I would say most people that are really addicted to ball pythons really hang out <laughs> on those two websites mainly. So, <laughs> so if you're thinking about getting a snake... Let me tell you, it's like potato chips. You can't just get one. <laughs> pretty soon you have more and more and more. And pretty soon, I mean, you depend on it financially. And you get you know, wrapped up in the frenzy. And, and it is really addictive, let me tell you. And I'm <laughs> pretty much in the middle of that addiction, as you can tell, with all my racks and tubs and everything. So <laughs> thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.